hallelujah praise the lord our god is good all the time and all the time and his mercies hallelujah uh, good evening everybody and uh, on behalf of our senior pastor prophet Raphael grant and the first lady pastor Rita grant i would like to welcome all of us to prayer city international ministries the very abode of the eagles uh, the very solution center uh, here in georgia and the united states of america and uh, on their behalf also I'd like to welcome you to the hour of uh, revolution so uh, they are the vision bearers of this ministry and the vision of this ministry is raising leaders who will impact and affect their generation so uh, it is my singular pleasure and honor uh, to stand in Papa's uh, seat today to bring you uh, the word for uh, this hour of revolution. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, uh, just to recap, we are in the month of uh, consecration. That's uh, the pillar for this month, consecration. Hallelujah. So uh, we've been dealing with consecration. Uh, ever since we started this holy month and uh, we're still going to continue that same vein so today we'll be talking about uh, still sanctification or consecration hallelujah and to God as we said it is very very crucial for our walk with Christ and uh, not only our work with Christ here on earth but also uh, that which would determine uh, our final place where we spend eternity hallelujah so because without um, holiness or righteousness no one can see the lord hallelujah amen so let's see going to recap uh, the definition of uh, consecration as i said the other time is uh, setting oneself apart we are setting ourselves apart for god to use us means sanctifying ourselves consecrating ourselves it means uh, being set apart for god's purpose or being set apart for God's will. So uh, this means we are in something and God took us out of it. it. means we are somewhere and God either takes us out of it and does not expect us to go back. Amen. So sanctification means that like we are in the world and so uh, we are taken out of the world and therefore we are not expected to go back. So, our lead scripture for tonight is going to be uh, John chapter 17. John chapter 17 from uh, verses 11 to 17. John 17. Verses 11 to 17. He said, Now, I am no longer in the world. And that version says that I am departing from the world. So, I am no longer in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me. So keep through your name those you, you've given to me. That is the church. Hallelujah. We should recall that the church is God's gift to Christ. Hallelujah. The church is God's gift to Christ, whereas Christ is God's gift to to the world but the world rejected him and the holy spirit is uh, uh, uh jesus and god's gift to the church amen hallelujah so holy father keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are one hallelujah let's continue while i was with them in the world i kept them in your name <laughs> hallelujah while i was with them in the world i kept them in your name those whom you gave me i have kept and none of them is lost <laughs> hallelujah which means that we are not expected to go back christ does not expect us to go back he said he kept all of them and none of them is lost except the son of perdition judas who did what he did so that scripture might be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue. Verse 13. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have 
or they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. So if the, if the world loves you, there's a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. This is very profound. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Verse 17. Sanctify them by your truth, and your word is truth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight, Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you, God, for the entrance of your word. And we pray, Almighty Father, Lord, that as you give us, O Lord, a heart that is like stubble, O God, let your word come out with power, with vigor, just like fire, O God. My Lord and my God, give me uh, the grace to be able uh, to uh, bring the word as received, O Lord. That is why I want to step aside that you may step in. I want to decrease that you may increase in the eyes of your people, O God. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. Let your word continually be a light on our path and a lamp unto our feet. In the name of Jesus, Father, we magnify you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, the scripture that we just read is very profound. Hallelujah. It's one of my most favorite chapters in the Bible. Because Jesus Christ was not speaking, you know, to uh, the seventy. He was not speaking to uh, the 5,000. Right? Or the 4,000 who ate his bread and later on said crucify him. And he was speaking now to a select group of disciples, the apostles. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it was during this meeting which, uh, which was uh, replete with a lot of revelations. Jesus Christ taught us a lot, or he taught the apostles a lot during this secret meeting. From John 13, we know that to John 17, it's a secret meeting between Jesus Christ and his apostles in the upper room. That is when communion was given. Hallelujah. It is when feet washing was also given. And it is when the Holy Spirit was introduced. And the duties of the Holy Spirit, all of them are profound. And so many profound things that he said, especially in John 17, that we need to understand in our work with God, in our work as people who have been set aside and consecrated for God's will and for God's purpose. Hallelujah. It is very, very important. Just, you know, I, I, I can just go on and say, he said, I, 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 I'll pray for this one, but I'll not pray for the world. Can you imagine that? It's very profound. So, so that, that, that makes me, I, I begin to think, that if you begin to act like the world, and then you, be, you think that Jesus Christ is your advocate, you, 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 you're, you're, you're mistaken. Am I communicating? You cannot behave like the world. You cannot come to church and behave like the world. And then you go back and say, Jesus, pray for me. Or when you go to the courtroom of heaven, if you are at that level, that spiritual level, where you can summon or ask God to summon the court of heaven and let my accuser appear. If your accuser now, who is the prosecutor, who is Satan, appears, who is going to pray for you? <laughs> who is going to pray for you because he says that i will not pray for the world i will not pray for the world because that's why he said he does not expect the father to take us out of the world and so he's not expecting us now to come out of the world but to stay there but not be part of them hallelujah stay there and not be part of them which means that we must be able to make a distinction between what the kingdom of God is and what the kingdom of darkness is. Even we, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We do not partake of the system of this world because we have been sanctified by truth. Hallelujah. So it is the word of God that will sanctify us. Hallelujah. That will set us apart. How would the word now set us apart? He said, the Bible says that ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall what set you free. Now, 
it is not the truth that sets you free. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, 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 because the truth exists from the beginning. Has been existing from the very beginning. Before the foundations of the world, the truth was. Because the Bible says that at the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, and the word now tabernacled amongst us. That's John 1, 1. And then in John 1, 14, he said, and the word tabernacled amongst us and became flesh. Amen. That was Jesus Christ. And now he's saying that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. Now he's saying that sanctify them by thy truth and thy word is truth. So you see, the word is truth. So it has existed before. So it is your knowledge of the truth. Amen. Your knowledge of the truth. That will set you free. Your intimacy. We talk about knowing the book. It's just like knowing a woman. Hallelujah. How intimate are you with the word? Just like a man is intimate with a woman. As Solomon said that there are three things that he confuses his mind. He, he, he wants to understand how a, a, a snake can slither on a rock. How a ship you know, sails on the sea. And how a man now knows a woman. So how do you know the word? It is the word that you know that will set you free. It's not the word because the word exists. Uh, am I communicating? The word on its own will not set you free. It's when you conscientiously right seek after the word you read it you understand it not only read it and understanding it you study it you meditate upon it and then you apply it you become intimate with the word it is that word therefore that will set you free once now you've hidden it in your heart that's why it says that word have i hidden in my heart that i'll not sin against you how do you hide that word in your heart it means that as abraham told his children that you read this word as god told abraham rather Teach your children the word. Let them hang it on their foreheads, on, the arm, on their arms. It means that they should have a, a, a communion with the word. They should now be imbued and imbibed with the word. Amen. Know the word. Just as a man knows a woman is intimate with them. And so once we know it, that is what is going now to sanctify or separate us from the world. Because even the world can pick the Bible and read it. They will not understand it. Because they only read it. They will not understand because they are not intimate with it. They don't know it. They don't come to know it. Hallelujah. They are not intimate with it. So they will never get the spirit that is in the word. Because John 6, 63 says that the words that I have given unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If they are spirit and they are life, then your spirit man must be able to be one with the word. <laughs> spirit to spirit. If your spirit cannot get it, if your spirit is not regenerated, the word of truth, you cannot get it. You read it and you never understand it. That is why philosophers out in the world, they can read the Bible over and over and over. As long as they are not regenerated, as long as their heart is regenerated, they will never understand it. I, I remember one time I was going out evangelizing while I was in Maryland. And I met a group of Muslims who came and they were, and they were argue, there was an argument. We went evangelizing and they came up and they said, now, we, we those who I was evangelizing with, they say, hey, pastor, come. And uh, there's these people who are asking some questions. So by the time I stood trying to answer their questions, I was surrounded by a whole group of Muslims. And they were trying to ask me um, if uh, God is the same like Allah. I said, no. They say, what? They say, maybe you are not a true pastor. I say, if you are you want to say, I, 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 don't, I, I don't care. But say, no. He said, how? I said, what's the name of your God? <laughs> I said, my, my God has a name. And this is the name, the I am that I am. So what's the name of Allah? I, I said, I, 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 I've doubled with Arabic. And I know Allah who is just God. <laughs> so what is his name? They say, uh, and they were talking in French, and they were saying, Messi was. Uh, I said, no. Nah. So that's, you see, your, your, your own God hasn't got a name. My God has a name. So it's not the same God, number one. And, and now they were telling me, and they, they said, okay, now uh, they were going to show me something in the Bible. I said, okay. 
and they brought out the little Gideon Bible, remember, New Testament and Proverbs. And they brought it out and they opened to John 16. And they said, now I'm going to send you the comforter. And they said, this comforter was Muhammad. Now I'm telling you about people who, who can read and they can quote that scripture. They, they know how they can quote it because they can quote the Quran. They can quote it. They quote it off by road. But you see, they don't even understand it because the spirit of God is not in them. So even what they're talking about, the comfort, when I was trying to tell them about the spirit, they could not understand spirit. So call the spirit. They ask me what is spirit. Because they don't understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they can read it, but they will never grasp it. And so the Holy Spirit is not in them because they are not born of the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they are not born of the spirit, there are things in scripture that the Holy Spirit cannot reveal to them. There are certain types in scripture that they will not be able to, to, to access because of their spirit man has not been regenerated. Hallelujah. So he said that is what they are speaking to you. They are what? They are spirit and they are life. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we come back to uh, John uh, 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 17, we hear that Jesus Christ is praying out to the Father. He said that I'm leaving. Now these ones that you give to me, I'm going to leave them. But Father, do not take them out of the world, but preserve them from the evil one. Which means that when we are sanctified, we are not expected to leave. When we are separated, we are not expected to go back. The separation is a spiritual separation. Because physically, we, are, we share the same space, the same physical space. Right? We go to the same market. Right? We use the same dollar. Amen? We use the same franc or the same CD or, 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 or the same Nara. Amen? We use the same pound or the same euro. But we are not the same. So there's a system that rules them and we are not part of that system even though we share the same space with them. Our thinking is different. Hallelujah. Because it says that as man thinketh in, in his heart, so is he. So who are you? How do you think? Do you think in consonance with the values of the world? That's why the Bible says in Psalm 1 verse 1, it said, Blessed is the man that not walketh in the counsel of the ungodly. We do not walk in the counsel of God, on God, but we walk on the path of righteousness, right? Nor stands on the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man is talking out to the church that does not follow the ways of the world. Hallelujah. Yeah, and they are not enticed by the lust of the world. Their eyes are not glued to the things of the world. Or even though we live in the world now, we are able now to discern what is good and what is evil. Why the world, because they are evil, they cannot discern. And that is why they take good for evil. They see white and they call it black. They see bitter and they call it sweet. That's why Isaiah said in Isaiah 5, he say, woe unto you. When you see good and you call it evil. Because the word of truth is not in them. That's why they see evil and they call it good. And then when they see good, they call it evil. When they see white, they call it black. And they see black and they call it white. So we are in that world, therefore, we must be separated. We must be sanctified. So being holy now refers to purity gained by separation. Hallelujah. Purity, that is gained by what? Separation from the world. We are the, worst, the ways of the world. The acts of the world. The things of the world. The, the modus operandi of the world. And the modus vivendi of the world. We separate ourselves from them. Even though... We can be of the same household, the same father and the same mother, yet the way we look at things, we differ. Hallelujah. And we stand our ground. Hallelujah. And we do not give in an inch. We have to be separated. And because of wisdom, we know how to, to navigate it. Even though we live amongst them, yet their ways of life are not our ways. The way they think are not the same way that we think. Hallelujah. Because we are completely separated unto God for God to use us in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. So therefore, we must separate ourselves from the world and living a life that is so aligned with God that it reflects his passions. The thing that God is passionate about. So we must so align so that, so that the way we live, 
is aligned with his passions, aligned with his goals, aligned with his objectives. But I know the thoughts that I have for you, they are thoughts of peace and not thoughts of evil. Hallelujah. Even though we are in the world, we know that the ways of God will not lead us into evil. That is why Jesus was praying unto God that protect them. You gave me a name. And while I was in the world, I protected them by your name. Amen. So whatever Jesus Christ did, because he had the name of God. Hallelujah. So he protected them by their name. He said, by your name also, protect them from the evil one. Do not take them out from the world, but keep them there. Preserve them there, but preserve them and protect them from the evil one so that how from the evil one that the evil one will not influence us hallelujah it means that we will not imbibe the ways of the evil one the temptations of the evil one will know that yes we will be tempted in several ways just as he came also and was tempted in all things and in all ways he was tempted with food he was tempted with what power you know, because there's power corrupts, as you say, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Give any person power, and then without the knowledge of God, he becomes a monster. Hmm? He becomes a monster. Give a politician who goes to church and is not of God, give him power and see what he will do with it. That is why God wants his people, his children, to hold power. He wants his children because a, 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 a nation, a, a, a nation that is holy, right? Exalt is exalted. But sin is what is a reproach unto God. A nation that is righteous and holy is a, exalted. But sin is what is a reproach. Because he also says that when the righteous bear rule, the people rejoice. <laughs> but when the wicked bear rule, the groan. So that's why he wants his people to be in power. Hallelujah. He wants his people to be in power. And so therefore, as I was saying about two Sundays ago, do not allow them to tell you, oh, there's separation between church and state. They just want you to leave it, leave them the power so that they'll grab everything and then rule you. Hallelujah. So do, it, 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 it can't just happen. That is not the will and that's not the counsel of God. Hallelujah. So because that's why he, he, Jesus Christ is saying that no, we should stay in the world. We should not separate ourselves. You see, they're telling you to separate that the separation between church and state. And remember, we are the, the church and we are in the world. Amen. And so how can you separate it? He's saying that Father, do not even take them out. Keep them. They preserve them. They will preserve them from the whole from, from the evil one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Do not take them out. Do not separate them. They have to stay in the world. And we have to stay in the world and we have to become conquerors in the world. Why? Because we are ambassadors. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are ambassadors. So, you, you, the president of the United States, you can't say, I want to take my ambassador. When you take your ambassador out of a country, it, it, it's a diplomatic crisis. It's when there's a diplomatic crisis and then you, you, you recall your ambassador. It means that you are at loggerheads. Because the ambassador represents the head of state in that, in, in that country. Because that's why he said he is minister, plenipotentiary, and extraordinary. He has full powers. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, that, that, those are the official titles of diplomats. Minister, plenipotentiary, extraordinary. So we are ambassadors according to 2 Corinthians 5.20. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 2 Corinthians uh, 520 uh, say we are ambassadors hallelujah read uh, 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 second corinthians 5 20 to 21 he said now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god were pleading through us we implore you on christ's behalf be reconciled to god hallelujah for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us amen that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So the same way that he sent us. Hallelujah. So he, too, he sent us. He was righteous. And he went into the world. So the same way that we go into the world. We also have to go into the world. We have to stay in the world. Because Jesus Christ had paid the price for us. Hallelujah. And so we become ambassadors. Amen. Which means that. The country, the world is not our home. 
Hallelujah. So this world is not my home. We are just passing through. That's why we are ambassadors. And the time will come that will come to the end of our duty tour. And they will call back home. Hallelujah. They will be called back home. But we must accomplish the purpose of which we were sent out into the world. That's why he said, as my father sent me into the world, so too I am sending you out into the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. We must get separated in order to do that. Hallelujah. To be those ambassadors. Amen. So therefore, disciples are set apart by God and equipped by the Holy Spirit and ready by God's word to enter into the world without being victimized. Hallelujah. So we are equipped by the word. Read it by, by God's word. Hallelujah. Equipped by the Holy Spirit now to go into the world without being what? Without being victimized. We will not become victims. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why he said that preserve them as they go out into. Do not take them out, but protect them. Because while I was with them, I protected them through your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why the, the Bible says that the name of the Lord is what is a strong tower and the righteous run into and they are safe. So which means that it is the word of God, his name, right? Which will be a strong tower in the world. We must right, run into it at all times for safety. Hallelujah. There's nothing. We have his word. We have his name. Hallelujah. That brings us sanctification. Hallelujah. So at all times, we must be ready at all times in the world. We cannot shy away from them. Amen. We, we need to engage them because we are amongst them. But we are not part of them. Just like an embassy, the United States Embassy in Ghana. Right? This is in Accra. Right? But it's not part of Accra. You, the moment somebody is fighting you, you just run into that embassy, that embassy is the United States of America. Because it bears the seal of that of the country. It's there. The seal of the United States is there. So that's why you see, if there's any trouble, the first thing that we're taking out is the flag. We take out the flag and we take out the seal. So that the enemy cannot lay hold on it. That represents the country. After that, that building, you like, you take it. <laughs> yes, they have gone, the people and the flag and the emblem, the emblems of the state, they are taken away. And so therefore, while we are there as ambassadors, we come with an anthem, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. We have the anthem that we sing. We have an emblem that we carry. We carry the name of God and we carry his word. Just as Jesus Christ came. And so we give them the word. If they receive it, fine. If they don't receive it, we behave just as Jesus Christ behaved. Hallelujah. So therefore, let's read Proverbs 30 verse 5 to 6. Proverbs 30. Verse 5. Every word of God is what? Is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Hallelujah. Say every word of God is what? Is pure. And God is a shield to those who, who put their trust in him. So, therefore, that we, we go into the world. We are equipped with the word. Hallelujah. Because his word is what is pure. His word is pure. And that he also is a shield to those who trust in him. So, we should remember that. That we are called to be sanctified in the world. Hallelujah. Remember that his word is pure. So, do not listen to people who have no regard for God, who will tell you things that they don't understand about the word. Hallelujah. They are very good at disparaging the word because the spirit of the word is not in them. So they'll never comprehend it. When you hear people saying, oh, Christians, okay, they are the flat earth society, as I said the other time, right? Which means that ah, we still believe that the earth is flat. 
Not knowing that it is written that God sits on the circumference of the earth. Even if the prophet was saying it at the time, he didn't understand. But he was just saying what God was telling him. Humanly speaking, he did not know that the world was round. When, when God is telling him that I sit on the circumference of the earth. And so he, the prophet will just tell us just as it is. But later on, even when science came with Galileo, who discovered the periscope now that, okay, the world is round and not flat, yet some people who hate children of God will say we are flat earth society. And why do they say that? Because they are trying to say, if we are against gay marriage, amen, we are just like antiquated. As if in the Bible we used to believe that the earth was flat. But they forget to know that the Bible clearly says that God sits on the circumference of the earth. And they try to make a mockery. And that, oh, just as the same as the Bible proscribed uh, interracial marriage. Hmm. I say, which Bible proscribes interracial marriage? You see, because they don't understand it. And they will try to quote the Viticals or when they were saying that, oh, when you go out, do not marry the children of the other nations, the daughters of the other nations, because they're going to steal your heart. Now, you see, the reason why he was saying it, why God was telling it, is because if you are not very careful, their ladies are going to take you away, lure you away from me into worshipping their other gods. Amen? So Isaiah 40, 22, I was saying that it is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Yes. Another, another verse we talk about the circumference of the earth and its inhabitants are I would like grasshoppers <laughs> who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. He stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spread them out like a tent to dwell in. Amen. So, so now you understand. So that before Galileo came in the Renaissance, right? The word of God knew already. It was stated in the word of God that the world is round. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Then they will tell you that oh, uh, intermarriage was, was, was prescribed. It was not. That is why when the children of Israel, I mean, you, you take the history that the genealogy of Christ is full of people from other tribes. <laughs> Amen. You have Rahab, the prostitute. Right? You have Ruth, the Moabites. And so forth. There are so many. And that even Joseph got married to Asina, the Egyptian. Right? So the half-tribe of Manasseh. Right? are part Egyptian. <laughs> and Ephraim, they are part Egyptian. So, the issue about intermarriage is not an issue in scripture at all. When you study scripture, no. So, do not allow the world to tell you what they don't understand in the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so that's why they want to capture and read and say, do not believe the word because they know that the word of God is what is truth. The word of God is truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the reason that God took us from the world is to use us for his purpose. Hallelujah. He separate us. Remember that he's not taking us out, but he's asking us to separate ourselves because he wants to use us. He wants people who trust him, who love him, right? who love his word, who love his commandment. Those who love him, he say, if you love me, obey all my commandments. Yes. If you love me. And then, those who hate him are those who don't obey his words. It's referred to as hatred. Those who hate God. He said he'll punish them, you know, for how many generations? <laughs> Up to the fourth, but them that who love God. He said he'll bless them thousands and thousands generation over. So it's because he wants to use us for his purpose. Hallelujah. Yes. For his will. For his counsel. So God will not use an impure vessel. Hallelujah. God does not want to use an impure vessel. That is why when he looked around the world, man had fallen into sin. 
when we, we, we understand the concept of original sin, then we understand that if there was another being who was not part of the sin, if Adam had given birth to Cain and Abel before they sinned, right? Those who were not part of it could have saved us. But because we are still in the loins of Abraham, so whatever they sinned, we also sinned. That's why you find in the book of Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews uh, 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 7 or is it 5, right? When he was talking about uh, uh, Melchizedek, you know, uh, 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 a meeting with Abraham after the slaughter of the kings, right? And now he said, Melchizedek, who was Jesus Christ, who came as a high priest, as the eternal high priest, because at that time, the law was not given because the high priest came with the law. Hallelujah. It came with Moses. So in the time of Abraham, therefore, there was no high priest. So Jesus Christ had to come down as that king of Melchizedek, who was the prince of peace. Those are all the attributes of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Now, and to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. That's a tithe. So that's why you see when people are arguing, oh, the tithe is of the Old Testament. You say, no, read this one. It comes before the Old Testament. <laughs> you understand? Yes, it comes before the law. So first being translated as king of righteousness and then king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Right? Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Who is that? Who has no father, no mother? But made like who the son of God remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. Right? To verse 5. That's what I'm coming to. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi who receive the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law. That is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. Right? Let's end it. So because they come from the loins of what? Abraham. Which means that at the time that Abraham was receiving or, or giving the tithe, was paying the tithe, the Levites were in his loins. <laughs> Amen. So which means that whatever you are doing right now, if you don't have a child, all your generation are in your loins right now. Right, Mr. Derek? All your generations are in the loins. So whatever you do today, they are doing it with you. So do not be surprised. As they say, the apple does not fall far from the tree. That when the child comes, he begins to behave like his father or like his mother. And you say, where is this one coming from? Check what you used to do. Because they were in your loins when you were doing those things. So be very careful what you do. <laughs> Hallelujah. So therefore, because the world, I will just bring that point just to emphasize that the world does not understand and so we cannot run by what the world is telling us. Hallelujah. We cannot run by what the world is telling us. Hallelujah. So, Christ said, come out of them and be separated. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 to 18. Come out. Come out. And be separated. Come. So therefore, come out from amongst them and be separated, says the Lord. Remember, the come out here doesn't mean that we should come out of the world. Hallelujah. It means that mentally, psychologically, morally, we should separate ourselves from them, from their ways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And be separated, says the Lord. He's not talking about segregation here. So that people should not go and be segregating. Or that blacks should be on this way. Or Christians should be on this way. No. We should be separated by our ways. Hallelujah. Yes. Just as the Christians, when they were in Antioch, when they looked at them, they said, no, this one had been with Jesus. Because they would live amongst the people. So the people who were not amongst them, who identify them, that you live among us, but we see that you are different. You are separate 
that you had been with Jesus Christ. That's what they call them Christians. Little Jesuses. Hallelujah. So the same way that Christ sent them out into that world in the early church, so the same way that this is sending us out today. That when they look at us, they will know that we are different. But we are amongst them. That's why they were able to recognize the difference. Hallelujah. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Hallelujah. So therefore, we must purify ourselves and we must stay pure. Hallelujah. In our hearts, we must stay pure. Amen. Because the Bible says in Matthew 5 verse 8, it said, Blessed are the pure in what in heart for they shall see God. Remember, as I was saying that our ultimate objective is for us to be with God. Hallelujah. To see God. To see God not even when we die, even while we are here. To be able to get into that dimension where we can commune with God. Hallelujah. See him in visions. Hallelujah. Then should be open our eyes to see the things that ordinary eyes cannot see. You must have a pure heart. That's why he says that guard your heart with all word, all diligence. According to Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it cometh all the issues of life. Your heart. Say, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall do what they shall see God. In Hebrews uh, 4.14, it also says that pursue peace with what? With all men. Seeing that, that we have a great and high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ, the, the Son of God, Hebrews, what, 12? I said 12, 14. Twelve, fourteen. yes. So pursue peace with all people and what and holiness or unrighteousness without which no one will see the Lord. Hallelujah. So pursue peace with all people. Because the one who has sent us is the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. He is the Prince of Peace. So now he came as the Prince of Peace. And now he's also sending us as princes of peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Into the world. Say, pursue peace with all men. He said, when I speak, Right? I am for peace, as David said. I am what? But when I speak, they are for war. But our words, <laughs> right? We pursue peace with them. Yes. They say anything, we are for peace. But in the spirit realm, we are dangerous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the warfare that we he's talking about is spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. It's not carnal warfare. It's not carnal warfare. It's not drawing daggers. Mm -hmm. Trying you know, to propagate the gospel through daggers and guns. Mm -hmm. Trying to force people. No. Jesus Christ said, ah, go, speak the word. If they reject you, do what? Brush your feet on their doormat and, and go away. And that will be like a curse unto them. When you come to this house, declare peace. Amen. He said, when you go to any house, declare what? Declare peace. Whosoever receives you, abide with them. If they reject you, go your way and wipe your feet of the dust as a curse against them. Because that is what God is calling us. Christianity is a religion of peace. Hallelujah. Because the one whose name we bear is the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Righteousness. He's the Prince of Holiness. And so that's how he is sending us out into the world as consecrated unto God. Hallelujah. As, as ambassadors. If he is the Prince of Peace, then we should also be ambassadors of peace. Hallelujah. And we must have a pure heart. Yes, a pure heart. That's why he says in Psalm 24 verse 3, then who is it that will ascend unto the hills of God? He who has a pure heart and, 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 and clean hands. In legalese, they say, whoever goes to equity goes with what? Clean hands. In legalese, you, can, you cannot go to law. Hmm? 
trying you know, to seek just if you yourself <laughs> your hands are, are dirty and you are seeking redress when your hands are dirty <laughs> so he who goes to law or goes to equity goes with clean hands so whosoever now will ascend into the hill of God that into his presence hallelujah or who may stand in his holy place it's only he who has more clean hands and a pure heart hallelujah so then we are called now to separate ourselves hallelujah unto God because sanctification it means and then he says that who has not lifted up his soul to an idol yes our, our soul because our soul is what is our intellect right our intellect our emotions and our willpower so you have not lifted up your soul your intellect what are the things that you 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 you, you meditate on <laughs> amen are they the things that give god glory are they the things you know that are of the world those are the are they the things that engross you that you, your heart is so much poured into hmm? the idols of the world the things that the world cherish is that the things that in your quiet time is that the things that you meditate upon are those the things that when no uh, uh, they are touched you you you, you are engrossed and you're incensed the, the things of the world when evil men you are corrected does it offend you when you're watching tv and evil people are corrected it maybe it's your favorite tv personality if, if they are a politician if they are corrected or they are rebuked are you offended then check yourself <laughs> because he says that you have not lifted up your soul to an idol oh, no i'm american idol <laughs> <laughs> is what it is <laughs> not lifting up your soul to an idol what is it an idol may be something that you, it may be money or it may be just your job your job that takes you away from the presence of god when they when they put god and your job you choose your job when they put government and god you choose government He said, government is giving me social security. <laughs> it's giving me uh, health care. <laughs> yes. As if God is not able to give you that. Or you have not sworn deceitfully. Yeah. Be because you see, nowadays, the, the Ten Commandments are taken away from the courthouses. And so you find out that people are lying. The prosecutor is lying, right? The jurors, they are all lying. When they see the truth, they cannot go by the truth. They tell you this is the law, right? You are reading at the law and then your decision, your verdicts contradicts even the law. How come? How is it possible? Because, you see, when the Ten Commandments, that's why some people are so incensed and so engrossed by the presence of the Ten Commandments in the, in the courtroom. Even the judge, you are looking and say, Thou shalt not do, that shall not steal, thou shalt not lie, especially that one, that shall not lie in court. They don't want it. So that they can come and they can pervert the law, pervert justice. Say, so Woe unto you who pervert justice. So woe unto you. That's uh, 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 as, uh, um, is that 10 verse 1. He said, woe unto you who write what? Unrighteous decrees. Woe unto you who write what? Unrighteous decrees. Yeah, woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees. Who write misfortunes which they have prescribed. Continue. <laughs> yeah. To rob the needy of what? Justice and to take what is right from the poor of my people that we those may be their prey hmm? and that they may rob the fatherless hmm? what will you do in the day of punishment and in the desolation which will come from afar to whom will you flee for help <laughs> and where will you leave your glory ah 
without me they shall bow down amongst the prisoners and they shall fall amongst the slain for all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still yes so you you understand when god talks about justice <laughs> yeah I remember he's not talking about social justice. <laughs> justice is different from social justice. Hallelujah. Justice it means that when you're rendering justice, you look at the person's social status. But the Bible clearly states that if a poor man and a rich man come before you as a judge, if the poor man is wrong, do not favor the poor man because he's poor, because of his condition. Meet out the justice. But today, if a poor man, are, they will tell you about equity. It means not equality of opportunity, but equality of outcomes. They are perverting everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the world in which we live. Hallelujah. And God is saying that we are going to be ambassadors. Amen. Who are going to bring the true word of God. Hallelujah. We are going to be ambassadors and we're going to affect our world. And that's why he says that, no, do not take them out of this world. Do not take them out, but preserve them from the evil one. Hallelujah. The ways of the wicked. Preserve them from those. So that's why God is calling us to, to be separated. Hallelujah. That when we are amongst them, therefore, we must know the will and the counsel and the purpose of God and in order to effect change in our generation, we must know what the word of God is saying. Hallelujah. In order to bring change to a perverse generation, to any country that is going to rack and ruin, we as Christians, as ambassadors of God, we have to stand our ground and make sure that we are agents of change. Hallelujah. Because we must remember that he said, as my father sent me, so too I'm sending you out into the world. As my father sent me. When Jesus Christ came, he did not pull back his punches against the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He did not pull back his punches. He spoke to them. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why they sought to kill him. Yes. Because he did not miss words when he spoke to them. He called him generation of vipers. Yes, vipers. Oh, Jesus. You think that Jesus Christ know <laughs> he, he, he was minding his words? No. <laughs> Even John the Baptist, the one who, who was his precursor, he himself, he went the same. So how do we expect Christians that when you, you preach a gospel, a gospel, they come and say, no, you, that was too harsh. No, they'll say, no, uh, tune it down. After who? As you tune it down, after who? Did Jesus Christ tune down? Did John the Baptist tune down? So where do you learn tuning down from? Who is your teacher of tuning down? Because when you tune down, you, you become neither cold nor hot. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, if you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. So, he says that you should be instant in season and out of season. You take a stance. When the issues are at stake, when Christian values are at stake, you are expected to take a stance. When the nation is going perverse, you have to take a stance and say, enough of this. Based on scripture. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are ambassadors. We must stand out through our truth. Hallelujah. Because he said, freely have we received and freely shall we give. His truth is in us. He has sanctified us by his truth. And his word is truth in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So therefore, we must always bear in mind. That sanctification, it means holiness and righteousness. Hallelujah. It is contrary to the doctrine of inclusion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Being separated. It's contrary to the inclusion. 
here nowadays you hear about inclusive in, inclusiveness yes they're perverting everything men are becoming female female are becoming men you look at them you don't know which is which oh just declare that i'm a man or i'm a woman yes put on some skirts some lipstick and then you commit a, an offense they put in in in, in, in the men's and uh, women's uh, jail no, no, no that women are impregnating women it's only in a perverse generation that you find women impregnating women yes you find able-bodied men who cannot compete with other men they say i'm a woman and they become champion so where then are the <laughs> women advocates where are they what a perverse generation where are they so that's why the scripture says that, no father do not take them out of the world right why does jesus christ was praying to the father no keep them in the world why should he keep us in the world to do what to be a, a, a dressing to the world to be able to speak out as he came and speak out. Remember, that's my key scripture. As my father sent me into the world, so too I am sending you into the world. It will, will it be easy? No. Will you be criticized? Yes. Hmm? Will you be lambasted? Will you be insulted? Will you be called names? And what does that change on you? Does it take uh, even a hair out of your head? And even if they were to take a hair out of your head, will you still not stand for the gospel? As I said the other time, that's what Paul told Timothy. He said, preach the word. Not fables. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Not grandma stories. Grandpa stories. Tall and bull stories. Don't preach them. Not philosophies. Preach the word and be instant in season and out of season. It means at all times when you're called to take a stance in defense of Christianity, you should defend it. In defense of the word of God, you must defend it. Hallelujah. That's why it said preach the word and be instant in season. Be ready in season and out of season. It means that when the times are good and when the times are not good, be ready. Let the word of God be the word of God. The truth shall be the truth. Say, ye shall know the truth, and it's the truth that will set you free. Hallelujah. That's why we are ambassadors. When an ambassador meets you know, the president of the other country, he tells his mind, he tells the mind of his president because he has full powers. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has full powers. That's why they call them ministers, plenty potential, means full of power any potential it means full of power and extraordinary they are not common and so when the ambassador speaks to that other person he speaks like head of state and head of state he's representing his president and at times he doesn't have to consult his president because he knows the mind of the president he knows the policies of the president as he said this one your excellency the united states will not accept with a straight face he is not the president, but he represents the president. So as a child of God, you are coming in with godly power and you have to tell the world, whoever they are, what the total will of God is, what the counsel of God is for that particular issue. Whatever be the issue at stake. We must be able, that's why he says that, we must be able to contend for the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, in Jude 3, right? said, we should earnestly contend for the faith that which once delivered unto the saints. It means that we must contend for a system of beliefs. That marriage is between a man and a woman. Period. That we created, when God created us, he created us male and female. He created he them. He did not create trans. Hallelujah. He did not. That's confusion is. For God is a God of peace and of confusion. Even in the churches of his world. So the church cannot imbibe general confusion. Or whatever it is. It cannot. 
That is the word of God. Hallelujah. So he says in Joshua 1 8, he said, that This word of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night. Right, day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Hallelujah. See, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. It means you shall confess it. Hallelujah. It means wherever you go, when you go to CNN, when you go to Fox, and they ask you a question that concerns the faith, let this word of the law come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Let it come out. When I ask you to define marriage, you see, you define it as God defines it and you damn the consequence. You shall meditate upon it day and night to observe and to do all that which is written in it. For then you will make your way what? Prosperous. It means that you would have fulfillment in everything that you do. And then you will have what? Good success because there's also bad success. There are people who cut corners. Hallelujah. They can lie their way to power. They can lie their way every day of their lives. You catch them in one lie. Now a lie has become the truth and the truth has become a lie. Good has become evil and evil has become good. Sweet has become bitter and bitter has become sweet. Everything has been introverted. But God wants us to hide his truth. In our hearts, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hide his truth. But we conclude this hour of revolution. That the words that you heard, let it revolutionize your thinking. The way you see things before, see, look at them again in another light, but in the light of the word of God. You can't just believe anything that you hear out there. Hallelujah. You may have your, your, your favorite teachers, right? As Paul was saying, <laughs> he said, a time will come that they heaped unto themselves teachers because they have itching ears. Who will tell them what they want to hear, not what they need to hear? That's why so many people are lost and confused because even when they are lying to your face, you're, you're listening. What are you listening? The word of God should be in you. When you see a woman, right? Even the cabinet minister, you see a man, he says he's a woman. What an abomination. And they're put in high positions. With all that, when they tell you the abominations, give them the truth. State the truth. The one you follow and whose name you bear spoke the truth. Even in the midst of adversity, he stood his ground and he's still standing. He was crucified. He went to hell. And took the keys. He defeated Satan there. Took the keys of hell. And came back. He is now a reason. And is seated. At the right hand. Of God the Father. But he will come again. In glory. right, To judge the living. And the dead. So remember. If Christ tarries. And are you called. What will you tell the Lord? What was your work here on earth? Did you do according to his bidding? Did you do his will? Did you act in accordance with his counsel? Or you acted in accordance with the counsel of a man? When the counsel of the world? Do you sit in the seat of the scornful? Or do you stand in, in the path of sinners? Or you walk all your life according to uh, the ways and the dictates? Of the ungodly. That is a question. That you have to answer. You. And you alone. Me and me alone. Before my maker. May the Lord bless his word.
Hallelujah. 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 We thank the Lord for his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Offering time. Offering time. I'm blessed. Time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, so uh, if you are if giving, you are giving your, offering your offering now, now use any of the five of them that you find for you. For your screens. Your screens. Is it cash out, sell, online checks, checks or, or, or tightly, or tightly. Give, give and give bountifully? Give hallelujah. hallelujah. Give, give bountifully. bountifully. For the same measure with which you give, it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. With good measure, press down, down share it just like a farmer. Hallelujah. Yes. When you putting corn or peanuts, you make sure you know when you're buying. Make sure that you shake it well. So all the credit is full. Even though the seller wants to just package them in the house, you say, no, shake it well, shake it well, shake it. Shake it together, together, press down, shake them together, together, and then run and rolling over. So that's how, how God is going God to send men and women to bless, you, bless your bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, Father, so Father, we thank you for these offices, Lord. Lord, we Lord, thank, thank you for the source of these offices, Lord, that you bought them. And that whatever, whatever they do, O oh God, God, may they prosper there in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we'll be so seeing you on Sunday. Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In person for those who are around Georgia. Hallelujah. Do not miss it. Our service time will be at 10 a.m. Eastern. Come and rejoice with us. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll still continue uh, with uh, the same uh, message as message of consecration. Hallelujah. Amen. And... Uh, so just uh, where you are, you may rise up to your feet and let's have the benediction. Father, we magnify you. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. Almighty Father, we want to thank you for such a glorious moment as this. I will spend your awesome presence. We want to thank you for the entrance of your word that has given us light, illumination, and understanding. We want to thank you, Lord, for the grace to be able to hide your word in our hearts. The grace, O oh Lord, to be our ambassadors in this world. That when we go forth, O oh Lord, we go walk in the spirit of the Lord God Almighty. That as we go forth from here, the spirit of the Lord God will go with you. His angel will precede you wherever you go. And will terrorize your enemies even before your faces in the name of Jesus. As you end this week, or this week, as you enter into the weekend, may the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and adding no sorrow, it will locate you and your families in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you touch shall become gold in the name of Jesus. May it multiply in your hands in the name of Jesus. For the Lord God of Abraham and the Lord God of Isaac and the Lord God of Israel, may he bless you and keep you in all your ways. May he raise his glorious countenance and may it shine upon your faces. And may the Lord your God be gracious unto you and grant you peace and rest on every side and from all evil occurrences. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. May we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May thank you so very much. Good night, and God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Paul. Amen.